Howdy everybody and welcome back to the Cast Gaming Channel. James here once again and uh, I've got another Napoleonic Total War 3 mod replay for you guys today. But before we go ahead and get into it, I just want to remind everybody, the Cast Gaming Channel kickoff tournament is underway. Teams have had a two-week extension in order to get their matches in. I've already got a replay in, and teams are coordinating as we speak. So keep an eye out for those matches to come on the channel. I'll post them as I get them in. If you're interested in sending me any replays that might be featured on the channel, go ahead and send something in the Cast Gaming Channel at gmail.com or head to the description box below. Click the link to my Discord, say hello, or send something in the replay section and we'll take a look so with that let's go ahead and get into today's match it's going to be a four versus four on russia 5b sent in by paranoid through the discord so thank you very much sir for sending that in to me he's been featured on another video previously on the channel uh, so it's going to be for the Imperial side today, we have Schwarzenberg, which I think is an actually an Austrian faction, uh, as the first Imperial faction today. Uh, Bo Harney is going to be faction number two. Uh, this is a core battle if you haven't picked up on it already. Udino is going to command army number three, and all the way on the right section of the map here is going to be the Imperial Guard. And I guess Edward Mortier is the commanding general for that army. So let's go ahead real quick over to the other side of the map, see who they're going to be fighting against. Uh, we have Konstantin Pavlovich Romanov as army number one for the coalition today. Let's see if I can find the other few armies here. Uh, doesn't see doesn't say they're general here it looks like we've got Dmitry Dekotorov as number two for the coalition today uh, I'll just go ahead and li link the other generals here since I can't particularly find them uh, but anyway let's go ahead in the tactical breakdown of the map so on the Imperial side today it's gonna be fairly simple in terms of uh, tactics and strategy uh, they're just going to want to command this hill that's kind of in the left center and from this hill you have an excellent vantage point all across the map you've got some excellent flanking fire from whatever side uh, comes towards your um, armies you can have some excellent artillery fire coming from the left side in through the center and on the right side, the only thing that's going to hinder your artillery fire on the right side is in the far distance. There is this village, this town over here uh, with a two pointer, which actually starts out closer to the Imperials or I'm sorry, the coalition. So they're going to be able to get that point uh, easily. However, uh, the coalition is going to be forced to attack. Uh, the Imperials on this left side have a couple options. They can just kind of hold put right here, stretch out across this line since they command this hill, make sure that uh, any coalition attempts towards the center are blocked right here. And that's kind of what I would recommend instead of going for an attack. Uh, and then I would stretch out my other armies here on the right side. You've got these two single pointers uh, in the back right corner of the map. If you hold those pointers along with this left center hill position you have the loc victory today um, as there is only this other two pointer which the coalition starts off with and a one pointer on this side over here as well this farmhouse right here in the center so the coalition will be forced to attack and the coalition if we go over to their side, they really do not have any good options for attacking. Basically, their options are try to outflank on this right side where uh, Bo Harnay's court is crossing. Or they can try and attack in the center here and try and storm this hill. Maybe get around uh, Schwarzenberg or just maybe potentially just overwhelm Schwarzenberg before Udino can come after them. And then finally, the side, the best option I think for the coalition would be to avoid this big hill on the other side of the map as best as possible. Actually, try and outflank on the left side 
um, and try and take these two one pointers here. Now this, there is a hill elevation right here. However, it does not look like France or the Imperials are really guarding them. And so you could have the LOC vantage pretty early on and you'd also be able to swing around if you were able to take this hill, well, you have a good defensive position to fall back to. You've got protection against cav charges with this river here. Uh, and you are also safer. Uh, you are also farther away from artillery fire that's placed upon the hill. Not to mention, you might be able to isolate a single army like you see uh, the Imperial Guard here. It's also a seven-pointer Imperial Guard, so you might be able to actually defeat them quicker than storming this center in defensive position. So that's kind of what I recommend for either side. It looks like uh, the Imperials are opting to make a potential push on this left side with this Boharnay unit or uh, core, which is fairly sizable. Got some artillery fire coming from Russia all the way back here. Let's see, are these, uh, these are 12 pounders. I'm actually surprised they were able to get such good shots and they're actually routing this French artillery piece. Uh, it's a 12 pounder, so that's kind of, that's that's gonna be a rough going for the Imperials. Normally, having the height advantage is a huge bonus, uh, but maybe they just were able to get in a lucky shot, able to get the artillery before it was able to unlimber. Uh, that could be the potential issue. Just seeing if I can see the other generals here. Which I think this is it. It's a 16 man unit. Or maybe not. Just a regular Lancer unit. Game trying to trip me up here. It's more artillery fire coming on the hill in the center. Getting some. Well, it looked like it was a good shot. Only got a couple a unit, uh, a couple men in this unit. Only one man right here, so uh, not as effective as it could be. Uh, looks like we have some Russian cav here in the back lines. It's kind of odd. You don't see the uh, the actual flags for the the army here. A little weird. They were able to route this Chevalier unit from Austria. I don't believe anyone can cross this river section. So if you are commanding the center, you have to cross on the flanks. You cannot cross in the center. Uh, and I say this because uh, Boharnais looks like he's coming over, crossing the river, and he's going to come to the right side, maybe to engage the flank of any attacking armies. At least that's what I'm assuming is going to happen. Imperials need to be careful. There is this uh, guerrilla cav in the back lines. Need to be careful, need to keep an eye on it because it could easily get some unaware general units or in, um, sleeping cav. It looks like we've got another cav charge going after one another. C9 cav versus a C7 cav. And Austria's cav is routing again. Some more Chevalier is gone. I'm very surprised that it didn't win this fight. Although I will say I'm not as um, I'm not as familiar with uh, Russian cav or guerrilla cav in general as I am with just normal cav. Got some lines finally appearing in the center here, which is where I mentioned maybe a possible attack could come from. I don't know if these guys are holding for the center. Maybe they're trying to get around on this far left flank. If they do, they need to hurry as quickly as they can uh, in order to support this army. This army is isolated by itself, so if you had, if you have a couple extra armies on this far left side, you could actually just push through this village right here and hit the flank of Udino, and you'd be able to get some excellent damage on them before the Imperial Guard could come up. And also, this army is far away. It's isolated. It's not going to be of any help, so you could potentially have a three or four on one in the center. It looks like we had some extra uh, cav battles here on this far side, and uh, this actually was able to route this this Chevalier unit from Boharnay. Boharnay, however you say. 
Uh, don't let those calves stop you guys if you're going to make the push. Keep going forward. Push with your uh, your units. Uh, a lot of Russian cav, especially uh, the Gorilla Cav, is designed to slow your army down just like how it played out in the real life. It's designed to harass, so you want to just keep pushing forward. Do your best to take as little um, damage as possible by the Gorilla Cab or any extra um, irritating scouting cab, etc. Well, it looks like we had a unit that lost some morale. Wonder if it took some artillery hits. Which I think is the case. It looks like they moved this artillery battery, this six pounder four gun horse artillery probably doing some good damage if I was the uh, Udino here yeah good job guys just fall back Russia has to come to you you don't want to just stand there and take a bunch of artillery fire and we've got another cab battle coming off here from Russia versus France And again, Russia is just winning these cab battles. I don't know if because of these, the cores in this match, if Russia just has a superior cav throughout the battle. I think, uh, I think the Imperials should be sending some squareable infantry units against this, uh, these ca in these cab battles in order to support because it looks like they they're having a very difficult time winning got uh, Schwartz and Berg Kev chasing some more Russian Kev uh, be careful guys it's only a C5 unit these guys are very quickly they'll probably be able to get run away from you it looks like they turned them around the second that uh, the Dragoons stopped chasing they hit the Dragoons in the back and this is why I was worried about having them give chase they'll probably be able to route this this Austrian Dragoon cab if it doesn't turn around and start fighting it finally looks like uh, Austria was able to send up some units to support however its Dragoon unit broke in the process And this is exactly what I would do. Good job, guys. Send your squareable infantry up to support the cab, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, you don't need it to secure the hill. You only need it to guard against Russia, and you have the high ground, so it's going to be very easily uh, defendable for you. Uh, Bo I fully recommend that you help push on this right side. Don't just sit there. Don't let the cab slow you down. Uh, because it, you're just playing into Russia's hand at the moment. Imperial Guard coming up as well. Still taking their time. It looks like the Russians are just kind of content to let their artillery pound away at the Imperial lines, which is not necessarily a bad idea at this point. It looks like they have the superior... It looks like they might have the cav advantage still, and they have the artillery advantage as well. Uh, Austria only has these two five-pounder units on top of the hill. And these units are slowly dwindling here. They've lost about 20 men, maybe about uh, 15 or so. And again, I don't like to see that Boherne is just, just standing here. It needs to be... Uh, Moving his armies. Uh, get your guys. Uh, Boherne, you're doing some embedding here. Just get your guys out uh, and start moving them up a little bit forward if you're worried about your, your army getting attacked. Uh, if you're not familiar, guys, uh, embedding is when you put uh, infantry inside of your artillery pieces. It's considered cheating, so please do not do it. Got some five pounders. Finally unlimbering. I don't know if this is going to be the best angle. They'll at least have some shots. Uh, they might not be able to get this double stacked infantry right here. Uh, but they might be able to get some excellent flanking fire on Russia right here. This 8-gun battery. This 
Looks like it could cause some serious hurt here. Uh, they're all 12 pounders. Eight 12 pounders is probably going to be uh, very tough to defend against. Looks like Russia's snuck up some skirmishers here and Udino's Corps went in for a charge with its cuirassiers unit. Gonna be able to rout these skirmishers no problem. Russia bringing up some extra cavalry here. It's bringing up the heavy hitters. All right, Barclay de Tolly is another core general here for the Russians today. I'm sorry I couldn't find them all. Uh, I'm sure you guys didn't want to spend half the match just looking at playing Where's Waldo on army generals. Looks like we've got these skirmishers that returned from routing. Some cav filling in the lines here. Good move here. Uh, be careful, Russia. You're at a huge disadvantage. I would try and avoid the hill as best you can. Plus, there's also extra units on top of it. I think your best bet is going to be hitting the flanks through the woods if you can do it, if you've got extra units. Try and stretch out the Imperial Guard or the Imperials as, as long as you can. This this side is just going to be facing too much fire um, from an elevated position. I mean, look at that. This is one of the higher positions I've seen in this game. I mean, that is a big elevation. There's also this artillery on the hill. You don't really want to get in a shooting match with that. Looks like the artillery just split this line across this unit here. Too bad we can't see the volleys. There we go. I always love to see the line battles. I think it's really cool to see the men lined up in a row, seeing the blast from the musket fires back and forth. Got this horse artillery moved up. Uh, be careful. Be careful, guys. This is something I don't like to see. You've got your artillery right on the line. Uh, yeah, it does kind of need to be pushed up because of the elevation here. It's not exactly a flat surface, so uh, in order to get some shots off he'll need to position his artillery here but it's not limbered or i'm sorry it's not unlimbered so you're going to be way more vulnerable to fire but you're also going to be vulnerable to charges uh infantry charges and cav charges which is why i say don't which is why i say don't put your artillery on the lines you got to move up your infantry in order to protect that artillery got some back and forth cav battles here it looks like Russia went in for a charge. Was countered. Schwartzberg, you could actually probably move up your infantry a little bit just to get a little bit better shots. Um, might expose them a little bit to artillery, but it looks like this the eight-gun battery just went to a three-gun battery. Uh, be careful, France. You're just going to want to push very, very heavy. If you're going to try and get after these guns, I would just start pushing hard if he could. He does have a couple cav units here, but he probably got way too many infantry units. You could always follow up with some extra units or some cav charges to try and negate that advantage. Oh, man. Oh, man. What's going on here? Boharney's Corps. Oh, you're killing me, guys. You're absolutely killing me. Uh, you're not in the fight you're just static your team's doing all the work they really need your support looks like russia is still trying to push for this hill not doing the best job uh it's 
very, very difficult to, to be able to take these elevated positions. Uh, if you've seen a previous one of mine uh, that has a high height advantage, you know that uh, Prussia spent a lot of its manpower trying to take a hill from a much lower pointer faction, inferior faction, but the, the hill was what saved him. We've got another cab battle here going in the center. Russia versus France. Classic battle. Got some extra Dragoons from the Imperial Guard thrown into the fight. Into the flank of this Cuirassier unit. Some Russian heavy cav. I'm actually surprised it didn't waver sooner. It looks like morale is lowering a bit. We've got some extra Russian units on the left side hitting the flank of France now. France able to route one of the heavy cav units, able to turn around, engage this flanking cav. Some more Russian cav is being committed. We've got one French heavy cav unit breaking. The other heavy cav unit, this cuirassier unit, has not broken. Able to survive the extra charge here. Got some more French units going after the routing Russian units. I'm actually surprised that uh, France won that fight. I thought there were just too many units to go against. Uh, but well done on France for proving me wrong here. We've got the French perspective. Got a nice Swiss unit. Here, always with the yellow uniforms, the Canaries. Very recognizable unit. Beautiful musket. And excellent music to my ears from the musket fire. Check up on this hill here again. This hill position is just too hard to take. I mean, this unit is close to half strength, but it's still hanging in there pretty well. This is an eight pointer versus, uh, well, we can't tell from the other side. And Bo Herney is slowly, like inch by inch, moving forward. Baby step after baby step is coming over. He needs to move over a lot sooner. Russia looks like it might be throwing in some reserves into the center here. We've got some maybe potentially returning cav. Looks like we've got some art. Oh, this artillery needs to be limbered back up, guys. Oh, never mind. These are some howitzer units. Be able to fire over the crest. Not too bad, but I'd recommend them getting them out of the river. Looks like we had some French cav returning from going after some routing Russian units. Looks like Russia went in for a charge here along the French lines. Be careful, guys. You're about to get flanked. Managed to route this Imperial Guard unit. Well done. However, they routed in the process. Looks like Russia is dividing the Imperials on this side, going in for a charge. Against Udino's flank. Uh, this might actually be a mistake. He might be using too many men to get a, uh, to engage Udino. The Imperial Guards unit might be a little bit easier. Uh, he's just getting shot really, um, really terribly in the flank here. 
and there goes a couple of units. I think he's going to use too much manpower here trying to attack Udino and the Imperial Guard. Looks like Russia has become disorganized. At this point, they should just fall back their armies, fall back, reorganize, try and actually go after the Imperial Guard's flank if they can. Uh, get your artillery back into the fight. We'll see if Bohernes has moved a little bit. As I, as I said before, inch by inch, baby steps. Uh, be careful, Austria. Don't give up too much of the high ground. You want to keep them up there as, as close as possible. Uh, beware this artillery getting fire into your flanks could do some devastating damage. If you're going to throw in reinforcements, I throw them into your allies' flank here. Send them to Udino. So got some threatening Russian Cav here. If these units cannot form square, you could probably charge them right in if you had extra infantry to engage. Otherwise, you could use this cavalry to hit the flanks of uh, Udino on this side. At least make them form square, push up your infantry, and then have, a, have them charge France while they're in the square formation. Back up on the hill. Oh no, an artillery man just went down. Russia going in for a charge with some dragoons. Into a square formation. Oh, that's no good. Pull him back. Pull them back, Russia. Imperial Guard, what happened to you? You're just letting your general get fired into. Should reorganize these guys or fall them back. This unit's morale was low for a moment. I was going to suggest maybe even throwing an, an infantry charge against them to break them. Uh, but it was a little bit too late. They decided to retreat. You can start pushing up your infantry against these retreating units. If you have extra Dragoon units, you can probably defeat this Austrian Dragoon unit. Now would be a good time to send some a cap charge in, push your infantry up on this side if you're trying to take this hill. There is some extra cav up here, so you need to be careful about um, charging or overextending uh, if you're going to continue this attack. Bohernate still just inching forward. Had he swept around and started actually just all out... Uh, Walking across the land, he probably would have swept this artillery right here. Probably would have caught Russia unaware. Probably caught Russia overextended here. Uh, Imperial Guard really should be coming to the aid of its ally right now. Hitting France, or I'm sorry, hitting Russia in the flanks with all of its might. Maybe use, leave a few units as a, as a guard against potential outflanking. And I think at this point, Russia probably doesn't really know what else to do. Uh, 
Uh, looks like we have uh, the cab charges on the flanks, as I suggested. Looks like uh, they were able to break one another. Uh, that's too bad that the Russian cab broke. Otherwise, it would have been useful for him for getting around the flank. Uh, but there's just some extra reinforcements here. It looks like Russia is bringing up some more reinforcements. Uh, Russia should really just start bringing up all of its uh, infantry units and try and just destroy the flank of France and the Imperials here on this side uh, in melee combat. I think that's what they're going to That's probably the best option for them at this point. It looks like they just don't have enough steam here in the center section of the right side. Even though there is this big gap, they just do not have the men. They don't have the manpower. They don't have the cavalry to exploit this at the moment. Uh, the only other thing I can suggest is if you can just throw these guys into melee combat I don't know if the teammate has has left or maybe he's just busy handling something elsewhere on the map uh, Maybe he's busy Handling this cavalry unit, which he's actually doing a good Whoever's doing is doing a good charge a job catching these infantry units Infantry units were sleeping. He was able to get the cav in there. Follow ups with some more cav. Try and route these infantry units as best you can. It's going to be really helpful for getting around the flank. Just look at a whole nother cav unit you could be using to push into this infantry here. Meanwhile, push up, push up the Russian infantry. You can wrap around Udino's flank at this point. Maybe even threaten the hill or get at this artillery. Do not put your... Oh, don't go after this square formation. It's not worth it. Imperial Guard is being cut off from its allies. and Basically, Russia, if it... It could potentially defeat either this... Uh, Imperial Guard Army or could defeat this court of Udino. Udino is really certain to have a uh, retreat. Its morale is very low. Russia should just infantry charge this side. This is a Grenadier unit. It's only at half strength. It's about to route. There goes one routing unit from the Swiss. And it looks like this unit, this Grenadier unit routed as well. If Russia continues to push, get these guys in melee combat with some infantry support. He could deal some devastating damage to the Imperials. Hopefully he's still got some cav to support his charge. The Imperial Guard is just kind of sitting there. It's decided that it was just going to, uh, it's going to do kind of a, um, a mock square formation with its entire entirety of its armor, army, I should say. Boharne, Boharne, whatever you, whatever you call it, uh, looks like it got some Russian guns here. Still, just baby stepping its way across the map. I think this game would have been over a lot sooner had he just continued to push harder than he did. And Austria is dwindling on the side. He's got a full health unit here on this far left side. However, his center has been in the match for a while. The units are dwindling. Probably cannot last forever, although Russia needs to make some good moves here uh, pretty darn quickly. He needs to break the center uh, if he wants to get around the flank here. He might lose his men if he continues the line battle. I would personally start charging the center units here along with your general. If you've got any cavalry left, a good place to punch a hole through the line would be there. Looks like Russia 
Maybe it was running out of steam with this attack. Or it looks like it's dividing its armies to go after both the Imperial Guard and Udinos Corps. That's a mistake. You gotta pick one army and go after it. Boharne still taking his time, coming all the way over. Is there still any artillery in the back here left? I cannot tell. I think I just heard it. Looks like this army is retreating in the face of the hill. And I would actually just maybe try and go after the Imperial Guard. Maybe try and defeat at least one army as quickly as you can. Uh, but it looks like Russia is just running out of steam here with its attack. If it's got any cavalry left, there's a couple units here. Could be used in support against the Imperial Guard. Very, very tough just to get around the hill area here. If anything, I think Russia needs to preserve its artillery. If there's anything that's going to win, it's going to be the artillery against whatever is left of France. They need to really just find a good defensive position now at this point. Uh, converge all their armies, get their artillery together and just try and defend as best as possible in fact if they were to choose this hill position right here they could defend the town uh, they would have a two-pointer they could actually send a couple units to go take the LOC victory points here uh, at this farmhouse and at this farmhouse back here and they could actually win the match if they could hold for another 20 minutes or so not saying that would be easy, but it's at least possible at this point. Right now, they're just too disorganized, too scattered. And there is still some artillery and a full other core that has not even engaged, really. Cav charges against the Imperials. Looks like he caught units that could not form square. And unfortunately his Cav routed. Oh, that's too bad. Just lost his hope of breaking this Imperial Guard core. And uh, I think that's pretty much the end of Russia. He managed to still got a few units here along with this big artillery battery. But he just does not have the men to defend it. He does have a Dragoon unit here. To to protect the artillery, but I just don't think it's going to be enough. And France really should just be pushing up. There's no need for him to, to be um, as cautious as he is being. I'm, Russia is pretty much defeated at this point. If he has any extra cavalry here, he be able probably to defeat any uh, charges along his line. Let's see if we can get a volley here. That one might have overshot, but looks like the artillery did manage a couple hits. Looks like Russia is pretty much gone from the center. They're just retreating to the rest of their army. Gonna reform a line here, it looks like. Make a last stand.
looks like we've got a Dragoon charge here in the center of the line against some units that cannot form square. Is it going to be enough to break them? And the cab actually just ended up routing. It was just a bit too much. Too much infantry to take on in a single charge. Russia pushing up its infantry. To try and delay the advance of this French Corps. I think this artillery battery here should probably change to canister shot at this point. If it has any hope of routing this French Corps, let's see if we can uh, get some volleys here. France is retreating in the face of this artillery. Oh, there goes some men from this this line. Oh, be careful. You got your general way far up in the battle. It's not exactly the best place for him to be. It looks like there's some cav coming out of nowhere. Got behind the lines of Boherne. What the heck did I miss? Men flying everywhere, some back cav charging. Holy cow, what the heck? I guess that's why he had the general up, up so far. I guess there was that big massive charge coming from Russia and it just routed a bunch of these French units that might have been, uh, might not have been paying attention. That was certainly a surprise. Russia went in for a chart, a desperate charge here against France's flank. Just not gonna be enough. Russia just does not have the strength left in order to fight the remaining French forces on top of all this reinforcement, which was which will surely come over pretty darn soon. see the thin lines of Russia here just dwindling the Russian general even his own bodyguard is slowly dwindling here from this intense fire from France and the large artillery battery might be finally at its end here Got some infantry that was thrown in to delay as best as possible. I don't think they're going to be able to delay long enough for the artillery to escape. And even if it did, Russia just does not have the manpower to win this. France smells blood in the water here and it's going after the final attack against Russia. So guys, it was a good game today. A difficult map for the coalition to win uh, because of the starting positions. That hill position was just way too difficult to take. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to the end. Good game to everybody. As I said before, today's replay was sent in by Paranoid, so thank you again for that. And so it was an Imperial victory today. For the Imperials, we have the Boharne Corps was commanded by Bob P.I. with 1,209 kills. The Austrian 
Corps. Uh, I believe with Schwarzenberg was commanded by Brain Damage with 1,152 kills. Udino was commanded by Markin 1357 and he had 1,204 kills. The Imperial Guard was commanded by Paranoid who had 948 kills. For the Coalition side today, I wish I had the names of the armies for you guys, but uh, Monkus was playing uh, one of the factions with 1,572. A ham sandwich was commanding a a Russian faction with 1,333 kills, and, uh, followed by OGMK with 647. And I guess Ihor Imperator uh, was the last Russian core commander with 398 kills. For the Imperial Guard, I'll go down through the list here. It looks like these, uh, this line unit was the top kill score with 173 kills. I'll just go down the list for you as normal. There you guys go. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. I will catch you on the next one.